So you're saying to yourself, okay, I have this 3D PDF model, what do I do with it? Well, in this video, we're going to show you the basics of how to get around and use these types of models. Now for this demonstration, I'm using Adobe Reader 11. If you're using another version of Adobe Reader, there might be slight variations in how some of the functions work, but there aren't too many of those, and they typically only show up when you get into the more advanced functions. What you're going to be seeing here will be pretty common for any Adobe Reader version that supports 3D PDFs. So when you open up your model, it looks like a normal PDF. You've got an image embedded in the middle. But when we hover over the image, you see it says click to activate. So we're going to do that. And we get a toolbar that opens up just above the image. So now we're ready to explore this model. So rotate is the default function, but we're going to start with pan. So we activate pan, and as you would expect, when you click and hold your left mouse button down, you can drag your model up and down, side to side, okay? It's pretty basic. You're not going to get any rotate. You're not going to get any zoom. Just straight pan, okay? So now let's go to zoom. So in zoom, again, left mouse button, hold it down, drag up and down, and you go in and out, bigger and smaller, okay? And side to side does nothing for you. It's all dragging up and down. Okay? Still pretty basic. All right, now another thing that you can do while you're in zoom is if you take your right mouse button and hold it down and drag, you're going to create a capture box. And when you let go, that image is zoomed and centered on the screen. So let's do that one more time. Say like right here. Okay? So it's pretty handy because now you don't have to go back and forth between zoom and pan to get the part of the model that you want to see. You can just do it with one swipe. Okay? So before we get into rotate, you've seen me hit this button a couple times already. It's the default view button. So as you're moving your model around and zooming in and out, you click this button, it's always going to bring you back to this home base view right here. Uh, so as you're working with these functions, uh, just remember it's there and uh, you'll find it's pretty handy sometimes. Okay, so rotate. So we're in rotate and again using your left mouse button, click and hold. And when you drag, you can see that you're just spinning the model in any direction, 360 degrees all around. And the thing that you want to make note of is that your rotation is not about an edge or an axis, it's about a point. There's a, a rotation point that's established within the model. And when you first start, that rotation point is going to be the geometrical center of whatever part or assembly that you're manipulating. Okay? So I'm going to show you later how you can change that rotation point. But it's important to know that it does make a difference where you click and hold. So I'm going to click up here and drag straight down. And so you're never going to get it perfectly aligned with the rotation point. So any little waggle that you have side to side, you're going to notice, but you know, you'll get the feel of it and you'll get pretty good at just doing, you know, rotations like this. And so now I'm going to come over here and go side to side. Okay. And it's rotating about that center point. And if I take I'll move this here. And if I go up into a corner and kind of pull across, you can see how it does it diagonally. Okay, so that's why it's important to remember that you're always rotating about a point and not an axis or an edge. All right. So as you're moving these models around, you're going to get pretty good at the feel of how you do your rotations. For instance, like I'm moving this one around. I'm going to kind of get them into a position here and say I want to turn them all the way around to the other side. So I'm going to do a big sweeping motion side to side. And you see you still got that waggle because you have that vertical movement. So you're pretty much going to use that as just a rough positioning. And then you'll go into the mode of where you just, you're going to find that you're going to do little short clicks, little small steps to kind of get the fine tuning position of the, the view that you want to see. So let's do that one more time. I'm just going to take a big sweeping, then another one, 
and then just kind of do my small clicks just to get it in the right position of just about where I want to see that. Okay. So here's a time saver. Uh, if you're in rotation and you want to pan or zoom, you don't have to physically go over and click on those functions to do that. In rotation, if you just hold down the right mouse key and drag it up and down, you're in a temporary zoom. And then when you let go, you're back in rotation. And if you hold down both the right and the left mouse key at the same time, now you're in a temporary pan. And when you let go, you're back into rotation again. So sometimes you're going to have 3D PDF files that are just a uh, model of a single part. Uh, but this one that we're looking at here is actually an assembly that's made up of four different parts. And we'll be able to see that when we click on the model tree. Okay. And we're going to pull these down out of the way. Those windows pertain to views, which is a different video. So if I expand on the door lock assembly, now I can see the four different parts that make up the assembly. And if I click on each one of those individually, you can see that they're highlighted in the image. And it works both directions. If I click on a part in the image, then that highlighted part is also highlighted up here in the model tree. And that can be really handy when you start looking at uh, models that are much larger assemblies than what we're looking at here. Okay. So now another feature that you have is you can use these check marks in the model tree and you can turn parts on and off. You can hide them or show them however you want. And you can do the same thing out here in the image. If you highlight a part and then right click, and then under part options, hit hide and you can bring it back and let's say that you want this part to be the only part showing you can do isolate and it's going to automatically hide all the other parts then you can bring those parts back by going show all parts and that can be very handy when you have a particularly large model so another thing you can do is by using the same types of clicks you can take a part and make it transparent. We'll make this one transparent also and then if you want to do it from within the image you can do it there too but one thing you need to remember is that see how that part is highlighted red? If I just come over here and I right click over that part it's still thinking that this is the part that I'm working with. So if you want to make this part transparent or not transparent, or quite frankly, any of these other functions, it must be highlighted red if you're working within the image field. And then you can turn that one off just like that. So let's say you have a small part or a part that's hidden and you want to find it pretty quick. So we'll go into the model tree and we'll use the snap ring. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right click and zoom to part and in the image you can see that it is pulled in and zoomed and centered on the part that you're looking for and makes it really easy to find. Okay. So we mentioned earlier about being able to change the rotation point and to do that we go to camera properties and we get this menu. And we have a couple of options. And if you remember, the default rotation point is the geometrical center of all of the parts in the assembly. This option here lets you pick a part. And now your rotation point is the geometrical center of that particular part. Okay. So the next option, select face. And don't worry if you don't know what a face is. All you need to know is that whatever point you pick on any of the parts, that's going to be your new rotation point. So we'll select out here by this corner. And now we're rotating about that corner. And we'll do it again over here. And now we're rotating about that point. And the last option 
I don't really use a whole lot, but the theory is, is that when you pick the three points, that forms a triangle, and the center of that triangle is now your new rotation point. So this function here, it's going to toggle you between an orthographic projection and a perspective. So we're going to rotate the model so that we've got everything looking like that. And we're going to toggle between the two. And you can see what's happening. This is the orthographic projection where everything is the same width no matter how far away it is from you in depth into the screen. When we turn on the perspective, now you get that depth of perception, whereas things get farther away from you into the screen, they get narrower. So just try the two, spin your part around, click between the two, see which one you like better. So this function is your rendering mode. So you have a drop down menu and you can just toggle through the different options and take a look at how they show your model and some of them quite frankly I don't think you'd ever really use but uh, they're there if you wanted to and this function is for your lighting so again you've got a drop down menu and you can just kind of see how it changes the different effects on your part. And like the rendering, I don't know that you would ever use some of these, but they're there if you wanted to. So this last function is just being able to change your background color. So you can use one from the selected palette, or you can go into the expanded palette and you can pick one from there, or just pick one from the selected palette. So that's about it for the basic functions. Uh, we hope what we showed you here today was helpful, easy to follow. Let us know if you have any comments and thanks for watching.